For the first time in a very long time, people living under the governance of the Ghetleng Rafir local municipality have clear water in their taps and a working sewage treatment plant. The people who achieve this are not elected officials and aren't paid salaries from taxpayers' money. Instead, concerned citizens took their local government to court. Do you think municipalities, do you think communities should be taking over service delivery and the constitutional mandate of local government? Vote in our Facebook and Twitter polls. Masake Ghana investigates what their success signifies for the rest of the country. Raw sewage is literally flowing in the streets. It's murky and yep, it smells. There's litter everywhere. The smell is absolutely unbearable. Roads, sewage, electricity, all have been impacted by the rot. Stories of shocking service delivery are nothing new on carte blanche. As presenters, we've all had our fair share of standing in raw sewage. It's almost like a rite of passage. But this time, we're introducing you to a community who seem to have found a solution to their service delivery woes. But is it that simple? This is water, from which is not supposed to be drinkable, but smell the water. It smells like it came out of my tap. This is Willie Jones, a local businessman in Costa, one of three towns that make up Khetleng Refir local municipality in the northwest province. I know the water is, is, is purified the way it should be. We've got testing equipment. Since January, Jones has found himself with a new job, running the waterworks and sewage treatment plant in Costa. In a few short weeks, he and fellow residents have restored them to full functionality. Bravo. Now my challenge is, I want everybody in the country who runs a sewage plant to do the same. This is not an illegal hijacking either. These residents have a high court order placing responsibility for water and sanitation directly into their hands. It's the culmination of a years-long battle which has often turned ugly. In 2018 um, was there a political uproar in Koster as a result of the fact that uh, the community has felt that the bestuur and the nodige diensten lever in terms of what the ground is for us. Karel van Heerden chairs the Ketling Refeer Concerned Citizens. In 2018, when the town was gripped by violent protests and the community had been without water for days, the Concerned Citizens obtained an urgent court order allowing them to take over the municipality's water services for a limited time. It was the answer here was to pump us weer water for the community. En toe ons daar die water werke vir ongeveer so 6 weke gehanteer. Another intervention in 2019 gave more short-term relief, but ultimately years of water cuts and raw sewage running directly into the local river led the people of Ketling Rivier to say enough is enough. Ons het gesien dat die municipale ambtenare nie die kennis het en ook nie die wil het om 'n volhoubare diens aan die gemeenskap te lewer nie. It was chaos in Costa. Nix had gewerkt nie. On the 18th of December, the community obtained yet another urgent interim order. This time from the Northwest High Court in Mabatu, says local attorney Andreas Piens. So there was a, an immediate effect to say stop polluting the rivers and file a report as to how the process can be better in 10 days. The municipality was also given 10 working days to come up with a plan to sustainably restore the town's water supply, failing which the residents were authorised to take control. The court said, listen, municipality, you have an obligation to the residents. We are affording you an opportunity to rectify the problems. And they simply failed or they ignored the court order. The 10 days came and went, and on the 7th of January, the concerned citizens took over both the waterworks and the wastewater treatment plant in Costa. This is the 144 million rand sewage treatment plant built by the Ketling Refir municipality. Now, when the residents took over in early January, it was at a complete standstill. Billy, let's talk about the day that you got here. Would you have been able to do what you just did? Yes and no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was awful stench. It was covered in condoms, tampons. Most of the sewage never even made it into the plant, says Jones. It was rerouted into the Costa River and straight into the Costa Dam, the town's drinking water. 
In Riachile, on the outskirts of Costa and around the corner from the sewage treatment plant, residents like George and Lovu are no stranger to service delivery failures. But even in these forgotten areas, the last few weeks have brought an unexpected change. From when? Last of last to last man by the noon. Fell off with the mood to me, as I'm for two days or three days. For the hope of my grandma, Tamu, go to my grandma. Eh? Ah, for after that. The December court order also ruled that Khetleng Refir Municipal Manager Joseph Mokhaile be sentenced to 90 days imprisonment, suspended on condition he meet the 10-day deadline. Basically, we are busy pursuing the contempt of court and the imprisonment of the municipal manager at this stage. On the 12th of January, the concerned citizens went back to court. Together with government, they agreed that a suitable service provider would be appointed to run the waterworks. We needed to, uh, to finalise a court order that would not be revisable and not be appealable. And that is why we obtained a court order by way of agreement. The ruling in Katling was really unique because of the fact that the courts actually empowered the residents to appoint a suitably qualified person or organization to take control of government services. Chantal Gladwin Wood is a partner at Schindler's Attorneys and an expert in municipal law. Our law recognizes that our courts are enabled, uh, empowered rather, to create unique solutions to unique problems. So there is a legal basis for people to be going to court to be asking for these kind of unique and novel le uh, legal remedies. Are we moving in a direction where the courts are going to be supporting residents more than in the past? I, I certainly hope that we are, because our government in certain instances has evinced a clear intention to refuse to comply with the law. And uh, we do need our courts to stand up and protect us. This actually tastes good, like good, clean drinking water. It's amazing to see what these residents have been able to achieve in such a short space of time. But does it set a risky precedent for other communities to take matters into their own hands? It's not the first time residents have attempted to run their own towns. Around the country, frustrated ratepayers have for years refused to pay for services they're not receiving. But Gladwin Wood says the law isn't always on their side. There's a difference in municipal law between taxes which are owed to the state regardless of whether you get one iota of service delivery in return. And taxes here actually include sewerage and refuse charges and, and, and what we call consumption fees or service charges. Now, these are electricity and water charges. You cannot withhold payments of rates and taxes. That's illegal as a rates boycott. But this does not mean that you have to pay for services that aren't delivered. But I think there's a danger uh, in the long run that we'll have these pockets uh, of resistance all over the country, uh, enforcing the kind of racial dichotomy that we've you know, we're struggling to overcome uh, over this past quarter of century. Professor Pandi Pillay is an expert in policy, finance and governance. He says that while we often blame corruption for service delivery failures, more important is a lack of human resources and capabilities at a local government level. We moved in this country from a highly centralised apartheid system to a completely decentralised three-sphere system, not taking into account the resources that would be needed and we've neglected, in my view, the local government sphere. But Pillay says self-governance by residents is not the answer. I think in the longer term, we need to seriously revisit our constitutional setup to enable municipalities to have more and better resources to enable them to manage and avoid this kind of crisis. The Khatleng Refir concerned citizens say they have no interest in replacing government. Glad nie. Ons is nie, ons is nie in die bestuur van van 'n regering betrokke nie. Ons is die waghond om te kyk dat maatskappye en munisipaliteite hulle werk doen vir die for the things they have for us to pay. And they are paying above the odds, forking out 7.5 million rand so far to get the waterworks up and running again, an amount which the municipality must reimburse within 30 days. So yeah, we've rendered the invoice and we're looking forward to payment.
Litigating against municipalities can be a very expensive and also a very daunting task, and it can take many years for you to get your money back. Unfortunately, in most of these cases, people are very happy initially to put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. The problem is that this is not sustainable on a long-term basis because it costs millions and millions every month. So the only really long-term solution is for residents and the municipality to create a working relationship. And here, the Kretling Refir residents have reason to be optimistic. They've got the ear of Muluki Kwaile, Northwest Province's MEC for Cooperative Governance, Human Settlements and Traditional Affairs. We have persons at the level of municipalities who are simply failing on project planning and implementation whose audit outcomes suggest that they are not complying to legislation and they are simply taking money away from basic services. Kwaile has undertaken to work with the concerned citizens to secure delivery of services. The province is now taking over. It should uh, take a form of the private-public partnership because we intend to work with the rate payers who have demonstrated their unshakable commitment to serve the people of a certain local municipality. Everyone agrees that there is still a long road ahead. The roads are still full of potholes and litter, and raw sewage still runs into the river and through Nlovo's yard. <laughs> The Concerned Citizens Authority is limited to the waterworks, so they have no jurisdiction to address these wider failures. But there's an undeniable scent of hope in the air, and it's hard to be cynical in the face of their excitement. It is the matter of reorientating the attitude uh, of the, uh, those who are leading our municipalities to appreciate such a rare opportunity of working with those who are even able to sacrifice their own resources for the purpose of saving the people. We will finish this until we have a workable solution. Ons as inwoners is nie so hopeloos nie. Ons moet net gaan kyk dat daar is genoeg regsremedies om ons te help om ons dorpe volhoubaar saam met die municipaliteit te besteer. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.